Hello, it's Andy from PCR Global. Welcome to the study buddy for the basics of risk assessment from the UK HSE. 13 questions and answers. The following 13 questions and answers on risk assessment has been taken from guidance provided by the UK HSE Health and Safety Executive. I'm providing this video to help those who want to know about risk assessment or refresh themselves about risk assessment. It is designed to be listened to or read when you do not wish to have your volume turned up. And I hope you find it helpful. One, is it a legal duty for employers to assess risk to the health and safety of their employees while at work? Yes, the significant risks must be recorded if the employer has five or more employees. Two, is it a legal duty to involve staff in every task-specific risk assessment? No. Consultation should form part of the general risk assessment process. In practice, most employers conduct a general assessment to identify the key risks and control measures, and then a second brief assessment of the risks by the employees about to embark on the job. Three. Is there such a thing as general risk assessments and specific risk assessments? Yes. General assessment. Employers are required to make an assessment of the health and safety risks to which employees and others are exposed to. The significant findings must be recorded where five or more people are employed. Specific assessments. Certain regulations require risk assessments for specific hazards and state in more detail what is required. These include work at height, hazardous substances, COSH, manual handling, noise, vibration, and lead. Four, is there such a thing as dynamic risk assessments or point of work risk assessments? Yes, point of work, dynamic risk assessments are essential for emergency services and useful for some peripatetic workers whose workplaces cannot be assessed in advance. However, they rely heavily on the competence of the individuals involved and can bring other problems, so need additional controls such as 1. Higher levels of training and regular refresher training, toolbox talks, etc. 2. Different types of supervision, example, unannounced visits, equipment checks. 3. Access to immediate advice or support or even authorization and four, on-site assessment tools, example, hazard checklists and risk assessment forms. Five, the law says a risk assessment must be suitable and sufficient. What is suitable and sufficient? A risk assessment should show that a proper check was made, you asked who might be affected, you dealt with all the obvious significant risks, taking into account the number of people who could be involved. The precautions are reasonable and the remaining risk is low. And employers involved your workers or their representatives in the process. Six, does the law require employers to appoint a competent person or persons? Yes. It is required under Regulation 7 of the Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations, 1999. 7. Do competent persons require qualifications and training? No. It's not usually essential for them to have formal qualifications and they're not required by law to have formal training, although it can help. 8. Who can companies appoint as competent persons? You could appoint one or a combination of yourself, one or more workers, or someone from outside the business. Usually, managing health and safety isn't complicated and employers can do it themselves with the help of their workers. Employers know their workplace best and the risks associated with it. If there's a competent person within the workforce, employers should use them rather than a competent person from outside the business. Nine, can I appoint a consultant or advisor? If your business or organization doesn't have the competence to manage health and safety in-house, for example, if it is large, complex or high risk, you can get help from a consultant or advisor. 
But remember, as the employer, managing health and safety will still be your legal duty. 10. How do I conduct a risk assessment? Under the Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999, the minimum you must do is identify what could cause injury or illness in your business. These are the hazards. Decide how likely it is that someone could be harmed and how seriously the risk and take action to eliminate the hazard or, if this isn't possible, control the risk. This can be done in five steps. One, identify the hazards. Two, assess the risks. Three, control the risks. Four, record your findings. And five, review the controls. Step one, identify hazards. How do you identify hazards? Look around your workplace for what may cause harm. These are the hazards. How people work and how plant and equipment are used. What chemicals and substances are used? What safe or unsafe work practices exist? The general state of your premises. Look back at your accident and ill health records as these can help you identify less obvious hazards. Take account of non-routine operations such as maintenance, cleaning or changes in production cycles. Think about hazards to health such as manual handling, the use of chemicals and causes of work-related stress. For each hazard, think about how employees, contractors, visitors or members of the public might be harmed. Vulnerable workers. Some workers have particular requirements, for example, young workers, migrant workers, new or expectant mothers and people with disabilities. Talk to your workers. Involve your employees as they will usually have good ideas. Step two, assess the risks. How do you assess risk? Once you've identified the hazards, decide how likely it is that someone could be harmed and how serious it could be. This is assessing the level of risk. Decide who might be harmed and how, what you're already doing to control the risks, what further action you need to take to control the risks, who needs to carry out the action, when the action is needed by. Look at what you're already doing and the controls you already have in place. Ask yourself, can I get rid of the hazard altogether? If not, how can I control the risks so that harm is unlikely? If you need further controls, you should consider redesigning the job, replacing the materials, machinery or process, organising your work to reduce exposure to the materials, machinery or process, identifying and implementing practical measures needed to work safely, providing personal protective equipment and making sure workers wear it. You're not expected to eliminate all risks, but you need to do everything reasonably practicable to protect people from harm. This means balancing the level of risk against the measures needed to control the real risk in terms of money, time or trouble. Step four, record your findings. When should you record? If you employ five or more people, you must record your significant findings, including the hazards, things that may cause harm, who might be harmed and how, what you are doing to control the risks. Do not rely purely on paperwork as your main priority should be to control the risks in practice. Question 11. Do I have to always write the findings in the risk assessment? If you wish, you can refer to other documents such as a health and safety manual or your policies and procedures, company rules, etc., rather than writing them out in the assessment findings. Question 12. Do I have to share the significant findings with employees? Yes, you will need to share the results of your findings with your employees. Review the controls. When should you review? You must review the controls you have put in place to make sure they are working. You should also review them if they may no longer be effective, there are changes in the workplace that could lead to new risks such as changes to staff, a process, the substances or equipment used, 
Also, consider a review if your workers have spotted any problems or there have been any accidents or near misses. Update your risk assessment record with any changes you make. Question 13. Do the HSE provide templates and example risk assessments to assist companies? Yes, they provide typical examples and show how other businesses have managed risks. The end. So that's it. Remember, high hazard activities will require a more detailed risk assessment for which there may be more specific guidance. The basics of risk assessment from the UK HSE, 13 questions and answers. Thanks for listening or reading and I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.